Hello, this is Jennifer Martinez. In this video, we're going to talk about derivatives of implicit functions. What is an implicit function? Well, an implicit function is a relationship in which the dependent variable is not isolated on one side. On the other hand, a function in the form of y equals f of x is said to be an explicit function. Let's look at a simple example of this. Where we're going to find the derivative of x squared plus y squared equals 4. We know this is a graph of radius 2, and y is really not a function of x on the circle as a whole. So we call this an implicit function. And you can see that the dependent variable y is not isolated on one side. But there is maybe the top half, the bottom half, there are parts of this that is a function that you could take the derivative of. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to be method one, by the way. This is not what we're going to be doing in the future. There's a much easier way. But just to show you the idea, we know that we could solve for y here. What would we get? We can subtract the x squared. You could take the square root of both sides and you do get two functions like I was mentioning. This is the top half of the circle, and then this is the bottom half. And then we could take the derivative of this separately. Again, this is this function, and if I take the derivative of that, I can use the chain rule. I would get 1 half, 4 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside. The 2's would cancel, so I'd get negative x on the top and 4 minus x squared on the denominator. I could also have done the bottom half. Here's the bottom half. That is when y equals a negative square root of 4 minus x squared. Everything's the same, except you would have y prime. Oh, I forgot a prime there. y prime is going to be equal to x over the square root of 4 minus x squared. That would be the derivative of the bottom half if you would go and do the same thing. Many times, though, it's really tough to solve for y, and so you might not want to do the old-fashioned method. So that is when we're going to learn implicit differentiation. So let's go ahead and do that. We can find the derivative without solving for y first. So what we're going to do is we want the derivative with respect to x. So y is our dependent, x is our independent, so I'm going to do d dx of the left equals the derivative with respect to x on the right. The derivative of x squared is just 2x. The derivative of x of y squared, so y is a some function of x, part of it is at least. So what this is going to be is going to be the chain rule. It's going to be 2y times the derivative of the inside and the derivative of the right the constant, the derivative of constant is 0. I'll explain this in a second, but let's go ahead and solve for dy dx. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And then what are we going to get is negative x over y, dividing both sides by 2y, and then canceling those 2's. Notice we have a implicit derivative. This derivative is now not just a function of x, it's a function of x and y, which means it depends on both x and y. And on this problem, which is why I chose it, you could solve for y. So this is actually the answer we're usually going to keep it in. But if you remember here, we had two answers, and they are the same. Because if you plug in what y was, it was plus or minus y equals um, the square root of 4 minus x squared, plus or minus, you will get both of these answers in one shot. So what I would like to do is just talk a little bit more about this bit. How did I get this bit? So let's look at that over here. So if I, I what did I do here is I took the derivative of y squared. 
So at some point, y is a function of x, wherever it is. So I'm just going to write that down. And we know we here we can use the chain rule. So this is going to be equal to 2, the f of x, times the derivative of the inside. And again, going back to y, so this is y times y prime, or 2y times dy dx, whatever form that you would like in. So this is just a little side note of what is going on there. So if you want to see the graph of this, you can graph implicit functions. There's a few programs that you can do this with, but a famous one is Desmos. So let's go ahead and check that out. Here it is. Here's the website. Um, here's, I already graphed it right here. I just typed that in. And I'm going to go ahead and check this out. So let's copy this and bring it to our other page. So you can see that this does make sense. See, dy dx was equal to, I'm going to just use the negative x over y. So when we have here y is 0 at this point to 0, we see that the slope of the tangent line is undefined. At this point, 0, 2, we see the x is 0. The slope of the tangent line is 0. That makes sense. Let's just do a point right here. What does that look like? That looks like 1, comma. Let's call it 1.7. It looks like maybe 1.7 something, 7.5. In fact, if you just put it into what it really is, if you plug in 1 here, it would be square root of 3. So whatever square root of 3 is, which is approximately 1.7. And if I put that in here, you would get, so this is, I'm going to look at this at the point. Let me just write at the point 1 comma 1.7. This would equal negative 1 over 1.7. And you can see it's negative. And if you actually get the decimal approximation, it's about negative 0.6. So about negative one half there makes sense. And by the way, if x is negative one, this would be negative one comma 1.7. So then that would be a positive and the slope would be positive. You can check out this point, one comma negative 1.7. That would make the y negative. So again, it would be positive, the same, the same, um, value, and so forth. So you can see it does work. So let's go look at the next example on Desmos. So let's go back to Desmos. I mean, if you want to graph the next one, you can you just literally type this in. And I'm going to just go, here's a bunch of different implicit functions. Notice how some of these are much harder to solve for y, like the second one. That's very difficult to solve for y. Uh, sometimes it's just impossible to solve for y. Uh, let's make this a little smaller. So what I did is I took off the first one. That's what that one looks like. You could see it's not a function. Let's go ahead and take the derivative of this one. So I'm going to go ahead and find y prime. This one time I'm just going to do method two by implicit differentiation. So I'm going to do the same thing. Take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. The left side is going to be 3x squared because it's with respect to x. This one's respect to y, so it's some sort of function inside there. So it's going to be 2y times the derivative of the inside. You could say do y dx, but this time I'll just say y prime. This one is going to be the product rule. So I'm going to let my first one be u and the second one be v. So I'm going to take the derivative of u, which is just 6 because it's with respect to x, times just the y, plus the other way around. I do 6x times the derivative of y. So that would be dy dx or y prime, if you'd rather. And then you can solve for y prime. So I'm going to subtract the y, 6xy prime from both sides get all my y primes on one side, 
to get. And then at the same time, I'm going to subtract 3x squared from both sides to get all the non-y primes on the other side, because I want to solve for y prime to get. And now we can factor out a y prime and then divide by 2y minus 6x. And there it is. y prime, the derivative of y with respect to x, is 6y minus 3x squared in the numerator over 2y minus 6x in the denominator. And there's no way I'm going to put this in terms of just x. So that would be the answer. It'd be a function, implicit function, depending on y and x. Or actually, it's an explicit derivative, but it's depending on y and x, isn't it? Um, OK. Let's go ahead and look at some points. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this graph from Desmos and check out some points with our derivative. So let's put that on the other page. I'm going to first go ahead and look at this point. It looks like it's right on there. That looks like it's the point 8, comma 32. We can check it and see if it works. It does. So if you check this out at the derivative, of that point, plugging in the point 8 comma 32 into this formula, you would get plugging in an 8 for the, sorry, the 32 for the y and the 8 for the x, this would be actually 0 in the t numerator. Since we'd have 192 minus 192, believe it or not, 0 over 16, which is indeed 0. Uh, you can try other points on here as well. They all should work. Uh, notice if you try 0 over 0, 0 comma 0, it is undetermined here. And it does make sense because that's kind of goes in twice. And it's undetermined, isn't it? Um, even though it looks like in this graph, it looks like horizontal. In this graph, it looks like it's not, but together, all together, there's all kinds of sharp points and stuff going on there. So at that, at that point, it's undeterminate. So if you want more practice, uh, if you want to check out some of these implicit differentiations, you can go to Desimos on your own, and you can try some of these other ones. Or you could type in your own. Hope that helps.